Mr. again. So welcome back to the second day of the second Qbert summit on February the 17th on 2022. Um, so let's directly jump into the first session. Um, pleased to welcome Ryan and Marcello, which are working on Qbert performance and are leading the SIG group there in Qbert. And they want to tell us today a little bit about Qbert scale and performance with six scale, uh, Ryan and Marcello, it's your turn. Thanks, Roman. Um, Ryan, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Oh, maybe it's me. Oh, it's probably me. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks, Roman. Uh, so, scale and uh, performance with uh, six scale. So Marcelo and I are gonna walk through a, a few things that have been uh, working on in, in six scale and in the area of uh, scale and performance. All right, um, so we're gonna start first with the, the story um, behind uh, six scale, kind of where it all started. So um, six scale was kind of, um, it started actually as a conversation that um, we were having internally at uh, NVIDIA. Uh, we, we really began um, looking at uh, trying to find if, uh, you know, measure performance of, um, of, of VM, VMIs. And we started by, by creating, you know, a, a bunch, you know, a tool that will, will create 500 VMIs and it will measure a few things and, um, take some data points and, and so on. And what we did is, uh, we took the data that we, we got from this tool, we plugged it into, you know, an Excel spreadsheet and, uh, we made some graphs and, um, and, uh, this is kind of a picture of, um, one of the, the first graphs we created, um, and, and we had some questions, and, uh, and this was actually where um, this this first this blue lines. This was uh, kind of where it started, and and we have um, what's what's pictured here is uh, they create the running time of of VMIs and split up between pods and VMIs. So the the vert launcher pod is the dotted line, and the solid line is the the VMI. Um, and so we'd measure, you know, when you know when a vert launcher pod would go running and when the VMI would go to running and we saw that there was this this gap between them and we thought that was interesting um uh, we you know we obviously want to have uh we want to see how fast we can make these uh, VMIs go from create to running so you know what can we do better uh, what can what changes can we make and so we we started off making a few changes and you know we measured again and um those changes we found that this green line here that um, we actually moved the, the, the lines in the graph left, which is cool. That's what we wanted. Um, you know, we were able to see, okay, there are maybe some ways we can improve performance. Uh, but we still had a lot of questions. I mean, we, this gap between um, the dotted and the solid lines was something that was a mystery. You know, why is that? Um, why are we seeing this? Um, theoretically, you know, we should be able to have VMIs go to running pretty quickly with a you know, very similar amount of time. But, the pods go to running for uh, the vert launcher pods go to running and uh so we uh so we have these questions um and um and you know even there's even some more like you can see the the slopes of these lines like for example the pod slopes fairly linear that's that it's been fairly consistent whereas the vmis um they vary quite a bit almost kind of speed up as like the more were created so like, there's a lot of questions and we had and um, we kind of took this conversation and, and we're having some of the code that we had, um, and we, you know, went and discussed with the community and this is really where it all started. Um, you know, we, there's a lot of interest in this and we saw that there was some the work that could be done and some improvements that maybe we could make. Um, so we decided, you know, okay, maybe we can meet regularly and, um, and really continue this conversation. So this is, this is how six scale started. And, um, and, uh, we came up with some goals, uh, that uh, we want to accomplish with this with the SIG, and we want to analyze Qbert component scalability. You know, this is important. You know, we have Qbert as a control plane. It, it we want to know how well it can scale. Um, we want to um, learn how Qbert can more efficiently use Kubernetes. Um, also, very important. Uh, Qbert's an extension of Kubernetes. So, as uh, since it's a guest on the platform, you know, we we can affect how the how pods how fast they can come up. And that's also really important for for us, you know, because we depend on pods, right? Um, and Qbert, so it's it's important that you know we don't um, you know affect them in any way, and and that and that will directly impact not only us and and our ability to scale and perform, but 
even other uh, people that are on the platform using using pods. Um, so we also, uh, you know, we want to document and test uh, our performance, our ability to perform um, and, and scale. And uh, we want to raise awareness to any ongoing work that's going on um, in these areas and um, bring some attention to it and um, have conversations about these things. So it, uh, where it began was, uh, like I said, with questions and conversations. So we start to try and um, answer some of these questions. And, and so we, we began with, you know, like, with with what like what is uh you know what are the steps that a vmi takes from going from creation to running we really wanted to enumerate this um and we built this uh we spent some time building this um this chart and you can't see a lot of details um because there's a lot going on there um and this chart's actually merged into the into the qvert repo and if you want to see it in more detail you can check it out on that link um, but it goes through all the steps that a vmi will go through all the phases even goes down to the function level, call out some functions that uh, will happen that go that it goes through in the code, all the components that it goes through, the handoffs, the phases, what they mean, um, and what to expect. Um, so this really served as a guide for us at least initially. So you know, if we wanted to have conversations about specific parts of the code base or just areas that we thought were um, that we might have some ideas of what what's going on there, maybe they're slow or maybe there's something that could be identified as um an issue or something we wanted to just huddle up around we, we'd have this diagram um and so this was great we you know we can have you know we now we understand okay what's going on with you know the phases so you know let's let's see what you know what else we can do and um now we we've had to um you know we kind of have this understanding of phases you know we want to we actually want to measure this um and this was some cool work um that was done uh as in the community we had um we want to measure the the create to running time of of VMIs, um, and uh, like we were doing in that graph with the with our own tool, we wanted to maybe there's a better way to do this, and and um, so there we there's the, we came up with a way with with this this pull request um, added a feature so that we could actually um, measure this and have it actually um, this data um, export to Prometheus so we can create some some cool graphs around it. Um, and we also wanted to do this so that we can see how long specific phases took. Um, so this is great. You know, we can we can take um, you know not only like uh, so we can do all sorts of different measurements for it, and, and we can also build tooling around it because this is actually on the status phase transition timestamp in the VMI uh, on the VMI object. Um, so it's really cool, and 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 you can check it out if you ever crack open a, a VMI object, you'll see it there, and. Um, if you want to know what this means, like, um, and how to how to use it, you can see like when I have an example down here with, you know, like pending. You can see there's this phase transition timestamp, and this is the the timestamp that we record when the VMI went into the pending phase. And so you can do is what you can do is if you want to measure how long we spend in in a, in a specific phase, you can subtract two of them. Like if you want to know how long we were spent in scheduling phase, you could subtract the schedule and the scheduling timestamp. So uh, the 53 minus 29 comes out to 24 seconds that we spent in scheduling phase. So we also spent a lot of time on, on measuring more. You know, we there was a bunch of work done um, to uh, add more metrics. You know, we found you know Prometheus was our friend. We wanted to um, we wanted to use it to expose these metrics, and we wanted to use Grafana to actually visualize them. And, and this became something that we centered a lot of our work around. Um, we add more metrics, uh, we can run more tests, we can then look at the dashboards and then we can talk about them. So we'd spend a lot of time actually in our meetings, we'd, talk, we'd look at dashboards from experiments um, and, and see if we can find an interesting things. And it did yield a lot of interesting um, uh, conversations and some, we actually in some cases found some interesting bugs and there's an example of, uh, a good example of one here. And um, this was a, a uh, go routine leak that we found um, when we we're exposing these metrics and actually analyzing them, this this test uh, you can see when is is conducted by creating a bunch of VMs and deleting them, creating more and, and deleting them, creating a few more and deleting them, all the way up to 300. And so we expect to have this you know graph that looks similar to this one at the bottom of the VMI phase transition latency, where we have an increase and then we go back to baseline, um, and then an increase go back to baseline, and and then we looked at our go routines and we found that the baseline um, actually increased, even as there were no VMIs running, which is a surprise. Uh, we would expect that this purple line would actually descend back to where it started, which is almost around the 200 range. But 
we're actually at the conclusion of the last EMI test of about 300. We see it; at, it's almost at 500. Um, so this was this was an interesting finding. We actually found um, filed a few issues and, and fixed them. Um, so another another important goal from the SIG has been to really test more. Um, we spent um, a bunch of time on finding different ways to um, to generate load um, and uh, to actually um, record um, what is going on when we when we when we do generate load. And so we have an audit tool that does this. Um, and the uh, picture here is actually some results uh, from the audit tool. Um, and as part of that, we actually have a, a make file recipe and make perf test that we run in the per a performance periodic job that will create 100 virtual machines, virtual machine instances, and um, run the audit tool and do some uh, and, and print out these measurements. Um, and as, uh, as we improve that over time, we actually added some thresholds fairly recently. So that um, you know, we take things like you know, we have the P50, um, the P95, the P99. We can take those, and we can set expectations about you know how long these virtual machines should take to actually go from create to running, um, and uh, and also um, you know we can find some bugs. And this was a fairly recent one. We saw you know the get node um, request is high. You know on the right here, this is we're we're measuring the the number of um, of requests that we're making to um, the API server, create requests, gets, uh, patches. You know, these things are important for scale. We, we, we want to make sure we're not making too many of these. And, and so, you know, we can see with, uh, you know, with create requests, we have, you know, around 100 create requests. And you can see like things like update virtual machine instances uh, and the count, you know, which roughly like a nine to one relationship. Which is to be expected um, because you know we VMIs go through different phases, scheduling pending, scheduled running. We expect updates, but there are some things that we don't expect. You know, we don't we don't want ratios to be too high. And we saw one that was a little bit interesting and seemed a bit out of place was the get nodes count. You know, we're five minutes in this test. We create 100 VMIs and we have 548 get nodes count. It seemed a little bizarre. Um, so we have we we created a bug to actually uh, record. Um, that and something we want to investigate. Marcelo, do you want to? Yes. <clears throat> yep. Thanks, Ryan. <clears throat> and um, so when we start also to discuss the performance of Kubevir, uh, especially for the upstream, what do we say, you know, the code that it's being merged to the, um, you know, the upstream repository we we also had the question about what's the how is the performance being affected by changes in the code so given that we decided to create a performance cluster and i will give some details about that so the kubevirt ci cd system has the pro and external clusters okay so the pro clusters they it's scheduling you know jobs um from the pro control plane cluster you can see here that it has like pro control plane and workload that is self uh you know meaning the names so the the control plane schedule jobs and runs a uh, functional tasks end-to-end -end functional tasks in the workload cluster okay and we have other two clusters now there is a arm cluster and a performance cluster so the pro control plane also schedule jobs that runs uh, runs jobs in one of the the cluster can be in the control plane workload both, and this job actually access an external cluster and run tests in this external cluster. Okay, so that's what's happening behind the scene here, and the external cluster it's not it's not creating a dedicated cluster a uh, kubevirt a yeah, cluster, so. In the functional tests, uh, it creates, uh, you know, creates a VM with a Kubernetes, you know, cluster inside this VM and runs the functional tests. So in the performance cluster, we don't want to create things inside the VM, you know, and run tests with nested virtualization. We want to run all the tests directly to the bare metal for performance, uh, you know, perspective. So that's why we are not creating an internal cluster. It's running directly to the Kubernetes cluster. And however, this have a drawback 
which means we cannot run multiple jobs at the same time. So they are installing, you know, installing Kubevert, running the test, and then, you know, installing and undeploying Kubevert. So only one test can run at the same time. Um, yes, and uh, this needs to be taken into account when creating performance jobs to run there. And we have also a Prometheus uh, stack deployed in a Grafana dashboard. The dashboard has uh, the control plane dashboard that uh, Ryan talked talked before, and also other several dashboards that it's well known for uh, Kubernetes, you know, to see resource and performance. Can you, yeah, okay, great, thanks. So right now, you know, Ryan already introduced that we have, uh, a performance job that was created before. And then we have other two Mars that are running the performance cluster. Okay. So again, the, the, the performance jobs is to, to try to see some performance regressions in the code, not only check the performance, how is it right now, but I also see how it would change, you know, um, continuously when we see, uh, updates in the code. So, we have uh, we first introduced a performance job that runs as a functional test. It's running the workload cluster with all the functional tests, and it's great 100 VMIs. Is the one that Ryan was showing before that we we got some interesting, uh, you know, uh, information from that. Uh, it actually generates load as a functional test as well, and then we have uh, another kind of jobs that runs in the performance cluster. It's all the, the one of job is all is, 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 uh, I, you know, it's creating 100 VMIs as the other jobs. And however, it's running in the performance cluster. However, it's using another tool to generate the load to create the VMIs and that we have internally, uh, you know, in the covert code also that's called per scale load generator. And we have another job that it's kind of trying to test some, uh, you know, variations of number of VMIs. I will not call this scale test because it's a small cluster. It only has three master nodes, it three worker nodes, but it's a performance cluster. So it's creating, you know, 200, 400, and 600 VMIs in this cluster, and also using the per scale load generator tool. So right now we have those, those tests. Right, can you go? This is this is one of the uh, you know snapshot of the 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 information of the the, the test that it's created one hundred VMI in the performance cluster. So we have a a lot of you know metrics there um, that we are always discussing in the six scale meetings and and to understand performance and and see. Uh, problem, you know, problems and and bugs that might be happening, as Ryan mentioned before. So this this job here, it's uh, creating 100 VMI, and and then we can see here, you know, um, interesting things that like the 99th percentile of VM creation time from the metric that Ryan explained before. Here is to create 100 VMI, it's less than one minute to create a VM. Uh, in the worst case, 99th percentile. And we can see other metrics like uh, virtual controller. It's doing, you know, self put operations per VMI. And also the virtual handler has many fail post operation. Okay. So we, you know, I just want to show here, you know, an example that we see some, some problem. It shouldn't have like, you know, too many, uh, 403, you know, uh, events and response from a, a request and this kind of analysis that we are doing with those jobs in the 6K. So can you go next? And here is the, you know, a picture of the, 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 the performance job that it's creating uh, more VMIs and we can see how it scale. We, uh, as Ryan was mentioned before, we do see that, um, the 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 create the VMI creation time is not linear right now. It's uh, sorry, it's not constant as jobs uh, pods creation time. 
it's actually linearly increasing with the number of BMIs. And this is things that we are analyzing and trying to understand, you know, what's it's the behavior of the, what's it's, uh, you know, involved in the latency of creating the VMI. And, and also uh, things that we see, for example, is although it's uh, already a small uh, experiment in a small cluster, we can see some performance like uh, the API request, right, you know, uh, number of write requests here. Um, we have, for example, set seven put operations per VMI when we're creating up to 500 VMIs. However, when we are creating uh, 600 VMIs, it drops a little bit. So it's definitely slowing down, you know, the creation of the VMI and uh, it's reaching some uh, upper bound limit and that we, we would also analyze, you know, this kind of, uh, information from this uh, test. Yeah, that's, I think, finish. Okay. Just a short okay. reminder, we've got five minutes left. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna talk about um, uh, some features that um, our feature we, we, we've worked on in, in six scale. Um, there's a link to the, the design proposal here. Um, this this feature is pretty cool. Um, the if what it's meant to do, virtual machine pools, is it's, uh, it's supposed to give you the ability to manage a group of similar VMs. Um, this is um, kind of like a high level abstraction that you see in a lot of infrastructure as a service providers when they take large amounts of VMs and they kind of want them to be, you know, they group them together in their, their life cycle or you know, whatever it is that you create them together and you can have an easy way to manipulate uh, the number of count or whatever it is about those virtual machines. Um, What's interesting is like this, this, you can visualize that this, this idea of virtual machine pool, it's kind of sounds similar to a deployment. Um, it, it is fairly similar, but there are some differences. And, and one of them is that I use the word similar VMs. And so I'll explain, I'll explain that because the VMs are going to have, you'll, they'll be very similar in their spec and their outlook, right? They may have a similar number of CPUs and cores and memory and um, things like that, but there's going to be things that make them unique. And we, and we want to be able to express those things. And I'll explain those in the, and the features, um, and the other thing is is that they're is that they're stateful, and uh, and that's uh, that I'll, that I'll also explain in the features. So the uh, some of these are actually work in progress, and I, I've marked um, them as a star as some things that are still being worked on. But um, this feature uh, was recently merged into something that it's in alpha, and you can try it yourself. So the uh, First one is, so being able to manage replication of stateful VMs at scale, virtual machine pools provide us that, that ability. Um, we want to uh, be able to have a replica count or whatever uh, that we can set increase and decrease and um, easily way to manage these. We want automated rollout of spec changes and other updates. So, you know, we have a spec of a, uh, of a virtual machine that's as part of the, you know, of the, this, of the similar virtual machine that's a part of the pool. When we make changes to them, you know, we may want to, uh, we want that change to actually be propagated out um, through the pool. Um, so third, we have um, automated and manual scale out, and scale in. Um, so this is kind of very similar behavior of what you see in a lot of, you know, like I said, deployments. You know, when you can have a group of virtual machines, you can change the number of replicas from five to ten, or from ten to five. Um, but what's interesting about this is, you know, when you take the number of, of virtual machines and, and you change it from ten to five. Well, um, this is where you have a decision to make. Um, and, and this is where the, the word staple comes in is that these VMs we expect is that the, we, to have some control over them. We, you know, what, what if you have workloads on, if you've got 10 VMs and you wanna bring it to five, you might have customer running on five of those VMs. So we wanna make a choice. We wanna be very deliberate on which VMs we want to remove. Um, so we wanna have that control. Um, automated replacement of virtual machines. Um, you know, once they're not passing health checks or were deleted, so replacement of virtual machines. And then, uh, you know, the ability to specify unique secrets and config map data per VM. This is where, you know, I we use the word similar VMs, so that they have a lot of similarities, but things that they will be unique, maybe like cloud init data, user data, um, um, things like that. There's, there's some concepts that we'd like uh, our VMs to have uniqueness about them. And and so there are certain fields that, that, that can be unique per VM. Well, there are certain ones that will be um, the same. 
And then uh, lastly, uh, the ability to detach um, from the from a you know, pool. So maybe forensics wanted to analyze something, you detach it, um, and then you maybe do some work on it and decommission it and automatically gets replaced in the pool. Okay, so talk about future work uh, very quickly. Um, we want to do we want to create some SLOs and you know and say scale. We want to come through and you know follow follow through uh, or follow Kumei's uh, example on this. They've created some SLOs. You know we would like to do the same. Um, we want some we want to generate a scale test that we can hand to users to actually do some measurements. Um, uh, scale is a complicated thing, and as well as performance and having users' ability to measure their their performance and scale will actually help us generate these SLOs. Um, performance and scale, uh, producing the job, you know, we want to be able to test code that gets checked in for its ability to scale and then its, and its performance. And then, you know, lastly, you generate some statistics about, um, about these things and then keep a release. Okay. Um, and, you know, we meet, uh, we actually meet Thursday, uh, 14 on the UTC, 10 ET, 7 Pacific. Um, so come join us. You know, we've had a lot of active participation in video, Red Hat, IBM, and others, and, um, you know, we welcome others uh, to join us. And here's a link to the meeting notes and uh, the Qbert community calendar. Uh, add it to your calendar, and please join us as we as we kind of continue our journey on, uh, on scale and performance. Thank you. So thank you, Ryan and Marcelo. So we have two questions in the chat. The first one from Ish. How were the baselines for expected thresholds established? Are there defaults if you don't set any? That's the first question. So there, um, so we took, uh, we, we've been sort of doing this uh, in the six scale meeting. We've been analyzing what we've been seeing in our performance job for, for actually a little while now. Um, and we've taken those, those numbers and that's sort of what we've sort of set in, uh, in CI as the thresholds. But the uh, it's actually controlled through entirely through the audit tool because really, like I was saying, performance and scale is sort of relative to your specific environment, and and so if you are seeing you know a certain amount of performance and and you want to measure it, um, you know use the audit tool and set and observe for yourself over time what your performance is, and you can set it yourself. But the way we do it is that currently we measure it in CI and we've measured it based on you know what we've seen and we set those. Uh, those um, numbers and the uh, in the job. So the, the next question is from Daniel. When will we see nice diagrams from the measured data within Pro, or is this published somehow somewhere else? For instance, the Grafana dashboard. Yeah, it's public. There is a public IP uh, that you can. Uh, it's if you it's linked in the slide. So it's you can see the Grafana dashboard and play around and see the you know all the metrics there. It's a red and, Marcel and Marcello, I think you published the dashboard actually in the monitoring repo in the Qubit org, so which can can be used with Grafana, right? Yes. Perfect. The next question is from Alexander. Any plans to expand this to other related projects like networking or CDI? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, certainly. Um, yeah, the, I mean, these all things, these things certainly play a role. Um, uh, we've we've talked about it in another in, our, in some of our meetings, you know, because any area that could affect how a VMI goes from you know created to running, you know, we want to measure as much as we can, and um, that can affect that can affect it. So definitely. That was the last question, Marcello and Ryan. Thanks a lot for the great presentation. And we will see us in roughly five minutes again for the next talk. See you then. Bye. Bye. Thank you.